Hello everyone, I'm Nicole. Welcome back to Clockwork Kitchen. And today we're gonna to be talking about salt. Salt is a huge topic, and this is definitely not going to be my only video on the subject. It's arguably the most important thing that you can do in your cooking process. And salt in general is the number one not so secret secret to making your food taste fantastic. Now there are a lot of varieties of salt out there from kosher salt to sea salt to table salt to Himalayan pink salt, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video. I think that there's been a lot of information already put out there about different kinds of salt and which one might be better than the other. Salmon Nosrat, for example, has salt, fat, acid, heat. I would definitely go to that resource to learn a little bit more. And honestly, I see it in the same way that I see cooking oils, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up above. But essentially, I see salt as your own personal preference. Which one do you like using? Which one do you already have around in your kitchen? Don't feel like you have to go out and buy a whole new salt just because you see me talk about a particular kind. Regardless of the type of salt that you like to use, Today's video is gonna be all about how to salt your food, also known as how to season your food. But if you do wanna see a video on different kinds of salt or any other topic around salt, let me know in the comments down below. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I don't think I knew how to properly salt my food until like, two years ago, maybe not even that, maybe only one year ago. And I have been teaching myself how to cook for at least the last 10 years. That's not to say that salting my food was my entire focus for the last 10 years, but I felt like I had a complete breakthrough about whenever it was, a year or two years ago, and I realized that up until then, I had not been salting my food to the level that I actually really, really want to, and that really makes my food taste so much better. So the point that I'm trying to get across here is that it's going to take some trial and error. You probably won't get it right the first time. You have to kind of tinker with it and try it out a little bit before you hit the perfect level that works well for you. Now you might be asking, why does this matter? You just sprinkle some salt on top of your food. Why does it matter if you do it properly? What's the really big deal with this? As my college roommate would say, salt teases flavor. So it's not that you love the taste of salt itself or just salt alone, but that salt makes things taste better. It's what makes a carrot actually taste like a carrot. It's what's gonna make that hunk of steak be juicy and tender and melt in your mouth and just make you salivate at the thought. <laughs> You can have amazing flavor combinations and things that work so well together, but if you're not adding salt to it and not salting it properly, something is always going to feel like it's missing. You're gonna taste it and you're gonna think, hmm, I just, I think there's still something more that needs to be in here. It's why you even see cake recipes have a little bit of salt in there because while you're not looking to taste salty foods when you're eating a cake, you need that salt in order to pull out those different flavors so that it actually tastes like a cake. It's also probably why you think restaurant food tastes better. I mean, yes, they also use a bunch of butter and different kinds of fats, but they're also salting their food to the right level. And so when you're there, you might think, oh, I could never make food that tastes this good. They must be doing something super special. And most of the time, it's just that they're salting their food right. So if you start doing that, you're already halfway there. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Some recipes will specify the amount of salt that you should put in and others will say salt to taste. And unless you're baking, I really think that you should just salt to taste no matter what the recipe says. Like it might be a good guideline if it says a tablespoon of salt or a teaspoon of salt probably, but just taste as you go. And if you think it needs more, add more. The recipe is just a guideline. It is not an ironclad thing that you have to follow. So you might be asking, what does salt to taste even mean? And at its most basic level, it just means salt something until you're happy with it and until you think it tastes right. Because of personal preferences, that amount is going to vary. Some people like food a little bit saltier than others, and you also have to take into account that different kinds of salt often have different levels of salinity, so that also could affect how much salt you wanna add depending on the type of salt that you're using. So if a recipe recommends a certain amount of salt, take that with a grain of salt. Oy, um, okay, the most important thing in this process is because you're salting to taste, that means you want to taste as you go. You wanna make sure that you're not reaching the end of your dish and you're like, 
Oh my goodness, that was way too salty. I added too much salt and I had no idea until the very end. You wanna be kind of trying things as you go, making sure that everything is tasting right throughout the process. Cooking is not just about what you get at the very end, it's all those little steps in between to make sure that everything is flowing in the right way and going exactly the way that you want it to. What you're looking for when you salt is for that little zing or pop in your mouth. So you might add some salt and think, oh, that tastes better. Okay, I, I might be good there. And that, to be honest, is what I was doing for quite a few years. But keep adding a little bit of salt at a time, stir it in, let it dissolve in, taste it again. And you wanna sort of reach that point where your mouth and your taste buds kind of start to sing. I'm, I'm trying my best to describe this. It's really hard to describe until you just experience it. So just keep adding little bits of salt and try it. Your mouth will eventually reach that point where you feel this sort of explosion of flavor and you're like, oh my God, this, this is amazing. And that is the point that you wanna try to get to, which is why it takes some trial and error to figure out at what point that's gonna work for your taste buds. I also wanna make sure that I talk about how to sprinkle salt over your food. And maybe I'm getting a little nerdy here, but I honestly think that the best way to add salt to your food is to sprinkle it with your hand. You wanna put your salt in a salt cellar or a salt bowl. We use this mini bowl over here. I guess, you know, since it is exposed to the elements, you might think that stuff would get into it, but we actually do a pretty good job of keeping that clean. But if you feel like there's no way that's gonna happen, there are stores that do sell specific salt cellars, which essentially are things that you can use to hold salt that do have a cover over them. Or you can even just pull out like a plastic Tupperware and use it that way. Whatever you have around that's gonna make you feel comfortable. Storing your salt in this way is gonna give you an easy way to just grab with your hand and sprinkle on top of whatever it is that you're cooking. I really I really like using my hand because I feel like I have a better idea of how much salt I'm adding to a particular dish. If you use a salt shaker or one of those salt grinders, it's just a lot harder to control how much is coming out of there and therefore I have a harder time telling how much I've added because you often can't see the salt once it hits the pan. So you might accidentally over salt that way. If you really, really like these salt shakers or grinders or if you've even just been using something to like pour with, like the huge like Morton salt containers, you can pour that onto one hand and then use your other hand to sprinkle from there. But I often find that this tends to lead to more waste because maybe you poured out too much onto your hand and then you can't like feed that back into the salt container so you end up throwing that away. So for that reason I just really highly recommend a salt bowl or a salt cellar or some sort of salt container that you can put onto your counter. It's also important that you hold your hand up high. If you salt too close to your food, the salt will land in one tiny area and it might not get evenly distributed. But if you hold your hand higher, the salt will spread out better and is just more likely to get into every part of your dish. The most important thing to consider to salt your food properly is when to salt your food. And that can really depend on what you're making. You'll salt it in maybe the beginning, the middle, and or the end. And throughout this entire process, it's really important to keep in mind how much salt you've added or what salty elements you're dealing with. And the earlier that you add the salt, the more infused it's going to become in your dish. This can get a little nerdy, a little complicated, but I'm gonna give you a really, really basic way to think about it, and then I'm gonna delve a little bit deeper just in case you wanna dive in with me. So, put super simply, the easiest way to know when to salt your food is to do it in the middle. And in the middle means while you're actually cooking your food. A basic rule of thumb is you wanna make sure that you're salting at every step. For example, we're cooking this braised chicken dish. I started off with some bacon, so I didn't add salt there because bacon is usually salty enough. But then I started off with the onions and I wanna let those sweat for a little bit. So you add some salt there to help pull out the moisture to properly salt those onions and to let that salt start dissolving in the pan. Then I added the mushrooms and I added some more salt to make sure that that salt gets incorporated into that step. After that chicken goes back in, we add some stock, we add some white wine. I add a little bit more salt there, but keeping in mind that the stock also has some salt in that as well, so not too much salt. I let that simmer away to finish cooking the chicken. After that's all done, we add a little bit of almond puree in there, and then you taste it at the very end to make sure that it doesn't need a little bit more salt. 
It's so important to salt your food while you're cooking because if you salt it at the very end, you're kind of just gonna be creating this outer layer of salt, but it's not going to infuse into what you're cooking. So you might take a bite and initially taste some saltiness, but as you chew through that bite, it's gonna become more and more bland. And that just shows you that it wasn't salted throughout the whole process. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you do feel like you might have slightly over salted one step, then you can pull back the amount of salt the next time that you go in to add that. So you can kind of keep incrementally adding salt and adjust as needed. As I mentioned, of course, tasting your food at the very end is also so important to just make sure that you don't want a little bit more on top. But again, this does not want to be the only thing that you do. Okay, so that's the beginner basic level where you salt your food in what I call the middle. Now let's dive a little bit deeper. You can also salt your food at the beginning, and this just means before you've added anything to the heat. So there's a lot of ways that you can do this. You can do wet brining, which is basically taking that food and putting it in water that has already had some salt dissolve into it. This usually is what you do with uh, meat, like a big pork chop, or I've done this for turkey for Thanksgiving, and that turkey comes out so, so juicy, like the juiciest turkey I've ever made. And that's because as that meat sits in there, it's gonna start to suck in that salt via the water. And because of that, it's gonna allow the meat to retain that juiciness and come out really, really tasty. I'm gonna do a whole video Video on brining a little bit more so if you want to dive deeper into that stay tuned for that video other methods are dry brining where you essentially just put salt and other spices straight on top of meat by itself without any kind of liquid and let that sit for a day to maybe up to three days you see this a lot with steak for sure there are people who recommend doing this very far in advance with their steak or I've also even done it with this braised chicken dish I've added salt on top of those chicken thighs and let them sit even just for 30 minutes and it makes a difference you might also add salt to vegetables like eggplant, for example, if you wanna pull out some of that moisture because salt will kind of suck out moisture if you really want that eggplant to be nice and dry so that then you can maybe go bread it and fry it, for example. Essentially, adding salt at the beginning of the process is a kind of pre-seasoning to help your food along. Don't stress too much about this if you're just like, I don't understand everything, how do I implement this? Usually a recipe will tell you if this is something that you need to do. So start off with recipes in general, they will help guide you as to what you need to do and when you should be salting at the beginning, at the middle or at the end. And from there, as you develop your intuition, then you can choose what you want to do if you think that you know salting at different stages makes the most sense to you. There are also some times where you just want to add salt at the very end. And the best example of this is when you're trying to brown something. So for example, we made that braised chicken dish and that has all those ingredients and so you do wanna salt that in the middle. But let's say that you're just cooking mushrooms by themselves and you really want those mushrooms to get nice and brown. In that case, you actually wanna hold off on salting them until the very end, until maybe two to three minutes before they come off the heat. And this is because, as I've been saying, salt does pull out moisture. So if you add mushrooms to a pan and then immediately add salt to that, it's gonna to start to pull out the moisture from those mushrooms. You're gonna to start to get a lot of liquid in the pan and that's gonna make it really, really hard to brown those mushrooms. But if you wait to add that salt and get those mushrooms nice and toasty and golden brown because there is no moisture to kind of offset that, then you can add salt at the very end, still with enough time to let it dissolve through the heat. So as I said, two to three minutes before you're pulling it off the heat. And that way they're still gonna taste really great. They're still gonna have the right amount of salt in there, but they're also gonna be nice and wonderfully brown. This also works really well for things like kale or any situation where you're cooking just maybe one or two ingredients. And so therefore there's not like a whole process like there was with the braised chicken and you can just salt at the end and it's not like you've missed the opportunity to salt through every step. Also, don't forget to salt your salads or anything that you're not putting over the heat. Build your salad, sprinkle some salt on top, or if your dressing has some salt in it, then keep that in mind. I usually just top mine with oil and vinegar, so I always sprinkle a little bit of salt on top of my salads. It makes the hugest difference. It won't maybe dissolve as perfectly as it does with something that's on the heat, but it is going to mix in there with all your other ingredients, and it's gonna make your salad taste amazing. Also in the summertime, for a plate of tomatoes, just some salt sprinkled on top of that, those tomatoes will taste 
so much better than they ever have before. As I've said a little bit throughout this video, you do want to keep in mind all of the other salty elements that you're using in your dish. We used bacon for the braised mushroom dish, and bacon is already pretty salty. So you want to keep in mind that bacon is going to also be bringing salt to that dish, and that means that maybe you don't need to put as much salt into that dish as you would otherwise if there wasn't bacon in it. Other things that bring salty elements are soy sauce. We make a lot of stir fries, as I've said many, many times, and we made this beef Thai larb recently. And because we use soy sauce and rice wine vinegar, those are already pretty salty, so we actually didn't feel the need to add salt to this dish at all. Other salty elements are things like olives and smoked salmon, and even some hot sauces I find really add a bit of salt to a dish. So keep those things in mind as you're cooking, and just make sure that you keep track of them so that you don't accidentally oversalt your dish. Speaking of which, you might be asking, so what if I accidentally overseason as I'm testing out with all of this salt? And I don't want to tell you that it's like not something to worry about, but most home cooks really do under season their food. I definitely was for a long time. And honestly, even if I have made something that tastes a little bit salty, I've never salted something to the extreme extent that it just becomes inedible because it's so salty. Like even in the first one to two years that I was learning how to cook, that didn't happen. You do wanna tread carefully, just make sure that you're not going like ham and throwing a ton of salt onto your dish to start off with. Just do little sprinkles here and there until you get the hang of it and you have an idea of how much salt you like in a dish in general. And if you do really feel like you've just oversalted your dish and it's too much and you can't handle it, the best recourse for this is to serve it with something that's a little bit bland so that it can kind of counteract that. One example is rice. I don't feel like I oversalted this larb, but if I had, I could serve it over rice and I wouldn't have seasoned that rice at all. And that way it'll kind of absorb some of that flavor and balance it out to at least hopefully right around the right point. Another thing that you can do is something like steamed potatoes or even things like green beans or broccoli, really starchy vegetables like that, that maybe you only lightly season or don't season at all, depending on what degree you feel like you need that balance. And that way you can pair those foods together and you can salvage it that way. Another thing to use is really cool elements like lettuce. Again, we did not oversalt the lard, but if I felt like we had, you can also serve it up with lettuce or you could put whatever you're eating, maybe it's tuna salad or or chicken salad or even just like chicken strips if you feel like wow I really oversalted these you could serve them in lettuce or you could serve them over a salad that you don't salt at all and then that way it'll counteract it and it'll balance it out so the key here is just to find something that is a little bit more bland that will balance so that's the best way that I know how to salt your food. There's a lot of things that we could cover. You might even still have some questions after this video. And if you do, please leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to help you out. As always, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up to support my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell icon down below to be notified next time I post. And thanks so much for watching Clockwork Kitchen. I'll see you next time.